The Bills offense has enjoyed an enormous amount of success through the first quarter of the NFL season. And if you listed the reasons why they are averaging 30.8 points per game, I bet center Mitch Morse would be pretty far down that list. Part of the reason Morse was brought to Buffalo was to help Allen. And part of the reason Morse came to the Queen City was because of Allen. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I came here was, uh, was Josh Allen is, uh, I think, a really good quarterback. Allen has catapulted himself into the MVP conversation. His improvement as a quarterback has been documented by just about every outlet. He's completing 70.9% of his passes, ranks third in touchdown passes with 12, and he has completed at least one pass to 12 different targets. To put it simply, he's balling out. Hey, 17! Good job, baby. Keep going. But what's not being talked about is how well the offensive line has played. In late July, starting right guard John Feliciano tore his peck and would miss an extended amount of time. This injury would start the revolving door at not just one guard position, but both. Cody Ford, Brian Winters, and Quentin Spain have all shared time at the guard positions. All of the talk about continuity up front was a nice narrative this summer, but continuity in the NFL is a rare thing. I think continuity is, is important, but it's also extremely rare in this profession, just whether it's for free agency or guys leaving or you know, injury. and um, Yeah, it's an unfortunate deal, but it happens all the time. The Bills' offensive line has only surrendered two sacks through four games and have been able to give Allen all the time he needs to throw the ball around the yard. And I believe their success in that area starts with Morse. Morse has been one of the most athletic centers since coming into the league, and that athleticism hasn't played the best ball of his career. His quickness and agility can be seen on each and every play. He makes things difficult on opposing defensive tackles because of his quickness, aggressive punch, and ability to engage. If you blink, you will miss how quick his punch is or how quickly he can counter. There are times where it's almost as if he's snapping and punching simultaneously. Post-snap, he punches with his left hand, which can deter the defensive tackle from rushing into the field A-gap and funnel the defender to the gap that he is responsible for. Now he has a defensive tackle rushing to the slide side of the protection, so he picks up some help to secure a nice, deep pocket for Allen. Morse is an elite shadow boxer when the ball is snapped and when he needs to counter. This is the type of physicality that he brings to the table. You know, it's, it's a physical game, and I pride myself on being pretty physical inside. On the snap, Morse fires a punch, but the rusher isn't affected. The rusher brings up his hands to counter, but Morse is one step ahead. He quickly executes a snatch trap. That's elite hand usage and mental processing. When watching his film, take notice on where he finishes his blocks, because it's incredibly important to Josh Allen. I like finishing towards the ball and um, I like picking my guys up. The interior offensive linemen are responsible for maintaining the depth of the pocket, with the tackles responsible for maintaining the width of the pocket. The depth of the pocket allows Allen to survey the field with an unobstructed view, and the Bills pivot man, Morse, is one of the best at doing that. Disregard the miscommunication between Allen and John Brown, and marvel at the balance exhibited by Morse. Once the defensive tackle processes run to pass, he transitions into a rusher. He tries using Morse's momentum against him by throwing him by, but Morse sticks to him like glue. He drops his hips and slides back to his left and back to his right. Morse has an idea on where Allen is going to set up in the pocket, so he just has to stay in between Allen and the rusher. And he does that with ease. The Bills are running play action 40.1% of the time, the fourth highest rate in the league. That has definitely helped the Bills offensive line this year. The run action allows a center like Morse to quickly get positional leverage on pass rushers before they are even ready to get out of their stances. Look at the quickness and fluidity on this pass block as Morse imitates a down block on a gap run. Not only is he on the defensive tackle quickly, but he anchors to seal a nice passing lane for Allen. The agile center routinely finishes near the ball, or as close to the line of scrimmage as possible, and he can do it with any combination of his elite athletic traits. Look at the range on this block. He is once again making this look like a down block, but the ability to reach the defensive lineman who is in a 4-eye technique, is insane. I don't think I've ever seen this executed successfully. He's smooth and connected in his kick slide, makes contact to widen the rusher, and as the rusher counters back inside, he power steps back towards the ball, gets square, and locks out. The efficiency that Morse plays with his lower half is incredibly important to his game. He's not the biggest lineman, weighing in the 300 to 305 pound range, so most defensive tackles are going to outweigh him and likely be stronger. That's why Morse relies on his quickness, feet, and agility. He does such a great job of countering power and widening the passing lane for his quarterback. On this play against the Jets, the defense is mugging every gap, 
and making it look like they're bringing pressure. But post-snap, the four interior defenders drop out, and the Jets only send three rushers. Quinton Williams attempts to collapse the pocket, but Deion Dawkins and Quinton Spain secure Williams. But it's Morse and Ford that keep Allen's field vision clear. Morse understands how to generate torque in a phone booth, which is a skill not many linemen have mastered. The rotational force that he can create in the run and pass game allows him to open up rushing lanes, finish blocks, and routinely widen the passing lanes if needed. But so far this season, his overlap and help techniques have been the difference up the middle given the revolving door at guard. On the snap, you see him punch and use what is commonly referred to as a drag hand. Morse uses this to deter the rusher from quickly spiking it to the A-gap. While the nose tackle is aligned in a shade technique over him, that A-gap is actually Winters' gap. So Morse is sliding to his left but using the drag hand to help Winters. But he is also executing an overlap technique. He steps behind Spain to overlap and seal the A-gap while quickly checking to see if the middle linebacker is going to rush. This overlap technique puts Morse in decent positional leverage if the two-eyed defensive tackle over Spain were to spike inside. That defensive tackle executes a swim move on Spain, but Morse is there to solidify the middle of the offensive line. Morse's help technique and slide protection was the plan of attack against the best defensive lineman in the NFL, Aaron Donald. Whatever side Donald aligned to, Morse was likely sliding to help the nearby guard. This allowed guards Ford and Winters only to have to worry about their outside gap because they knew that Morse would be inside to help. There were several reps where Morse was stacked behind the guards so that he could help in either direction. If the Rams ran a twist or stunt, the sheriff was there to hold it down. Morse's verbal and nonverbal communication on these plays doesn't go unnoticed. Look at how he places his hand on Ford's back to let him know that he is there to help and in position to pick up the looper. Morse's sense of where Allen is in the pocket is uncanny. He's made some of the biggest blocks of the year so far in the most crucial moments. On this third and 25 player near the end of the game, the Bills slide to Donald. With the Rams in a wide alignment, Morse once again uses the overlap technique. The edge rusher spikes into the B gap and Morse gets just enough of the rusher to help Ty Seke get his feet back into position. But Morse is really looking for Donald because he is looping wide. He's able to get there and keep Donald away from where Allen is set up in the pocket. As a pivot man and lineman who executes help to both sides, staying on the same level with adjacent linemen is key. Morse's peripheral vision and ability to remain on level with Ford, Winters, and Spain is crucial when teams want to run planned stunts and games. Against the Jets, you see Morse use a two-handed punch to pass Williams to Ford, then quickly pick up the looper Henry Anderson. Morse takes Anderson where he wants to go, while widening the passing lane for Allen. On this play from week one, Morse isn't positive that linebacker Neville Hewitt is going to rush the passer. But what he does know is that he has to remain level with his teammate in case he needs to help or if they run a stunt. So on the snap, he backpedals evenly with Spain. Hewitt dives inside so Morse passes him to Spain and is able to pick up the looping Quinn and Williams. Whether the Bills are facing a top tier edge rusher or defensive tackle, Morse is usually where the pass protection game plan begins. Now that he's in his second season in this scheme, he's playing much faster and not only able to execute his assignment, but has played a crucial role at helping the guards. I think last year I was caught really just not on purpose, but focusing on what I had and that sometimes would make me a mute uh, when that's not the time to do it. Uh, I think just learning how to compliment the people I'm playing next to since I'm starting to figure out myself and most of the guys he is playing next to are all big grizzly bears and are guys that are playing two positions. Guys who are powerful but aren't really light on their feet. Morse's quickness and overall athleticism complement the Bills guards and put him in the driver's seat. They are forced to play off of his lead and he can also help erase mistakes by them. So while a lot of the credit on the offensive side of the ball deserves to go in the direction of Allen, his weapons, offensive coordinator Brian Dable and others, I think it's time for Morse to get some love. He's playing at an elite level right now, and if Allen continues his MVP campaign, it'll be because of that sheriff patrolling up the middle, Mitch Morse.